everyone, this is Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio. Today I have a Christmas ornament to share with you. This is a angel art doll Christmas ornament. I'm starting out with some thin wooden pieces and I have a package that I got at Michael's in the child children's section that just has a lot of different pieces and I I bought it actually for the circles so I used up all the circles and so I'm having to use one from a different package that has a hole in it I wish that hole wasn't there but I'll I'll make it work the other pieces are from that package and it just has a lot of different little thin shapes to make things out of so I am putting gesso on just the circle because I'm planning on painting that and I want to make sure that the wood doesn't just sit there and soak up all my paint so I'm sealing it with gesso and then I'll set that aside to dry. The next thing I'm going to do is mark some little marks on the oval piece. That's going to be my art doll's body. And I want to attach arms and legs and so I want to drill some little holes. So I've made the marks and then I went away in search of the drill and the drill bits and that was way more complicated than I expected. But I did find them and I did drill them and I've come back and now I have little drill holes on the, the body. And then I'm going to use this piece of cardstock with a little bit of white paint on it which was a clean off of my circular jelly print the other day when I was just messing around and I, I needed to clean off the white. I think it looks like a blue sky with clouds. And this is going to be an angel and I think that angels are made out of stars and moonbeams. So I thought that a, a beautiful cloudy sky would be the perfect dress for my little angel. I'm using a thick gel, it's a matte gel medium, to apply this because it is, it is cardstock so I want to make sure that it's well adhered onto the wood with a good coverage and I just applied it with my fingers. And then I'm going ahead and punching the holes through because if I just put the paper on both sides I would have no idea where those drill holes are. So I wanted to make sure that they were marked. You might notice that on this piece it's not a complete oval but I'm okay with it because only the top part is going to show and I know this already because I'm going to put a little skirt on it that's going to cover that bottom part. So I wasn't too concerned that a little bit of the wood was showing. It's, it's not going to show in the end. So I'll put that aside to dry and then I'm going to work on the little teardrop shapes which are going to be wings. I have some glitter paper that's self-adhesive and it's 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 really not even paper. It's kind of plasticky but the effect that it has is that you've put glue on and put old-fashioned glitter on there and completely covered it. That's really what it looks like except for there's no glitter flaking off of it which is the bane of glitter. So I put that on both sides. I cut out a little part there so that you know this would be shorter. And now I'm just going to put that pretty lacy looking edge of the doily on there. That's a heart shaped paper doily. And where the holes are on the doily the glitter paper or whatever it is shines through and it, it looks pretty cool. I just I wanted it kind of that that lacy doily look looks kind of like feathers or something on her wings and so I wanted that effect but I also wanted the glitter so I just did both one on top of the other and the part that's sticking out of the paper I'll be putting on the bottom for like the edges of the wings I want I want this to be very very feminine and very lacy and glittery and sparkly I want there to be light hitting it and it being able to sparkle so there's lots of different types of glittery sparkly things on here. Now what I'm doing is sanding the edges. You can use a sanding block and that's what this is to to make you know where you've cut around a piece you've, you've collaged something and you've cut around the wood or this would also works on chipboard but you have it's it's raggedy on the edges you can just sand it off it works great you can sand paper it makes it makes a dusty mess which you didn't see me clean up but it does work and then I'm just covering up the edges with some Dy PBO Dyna blue green uh, shimmery paint just because I didn't want the wood showing so these are a couple other scraps that I had in one of my color boxes of all the different scraps they're jelly print pieces and I'm just gonna I'm gonna glue this this lace on there 
using uh, some deco art satin decoupage stuff and I'm just soaking that lace with with it and it's gonna it's gonna make the paper more stiff and it's also of course adhering the lace so I'm gonna have to set those aside that's gonna be the skirt there's a lot of drying during this <laughs> project a lot of drying times I hate drying times okay so I want to put a face on this I've got the gesso on and now I'm gonna get the portrait pink but I don't want it to be that pink so I'm mixing it with some white those are Liquitex basics acrylics I'm just mixing the two colors together I'm gonna point paint the front and back of this and then again set it aside to dry so I'll move on to a different step okay I'm gonna make the arms and legs now and I'm gonna use these buttons for the hands and feet this is a very inexpensive plastic button I'm not even sure where I got it but I think it was like $2.99 or something I had this idea that I was gonna make one of those Finnebar or Finnebar however you say her name assemblage pieces so I bought these and then I haven't used them yet but this is gonna work for this so I get out my tray I'm the most clumsy person if I don't put all my beads and findings and little things in something then they fall off my desk they land on the floor I can't find them I'm crawling under my desk I whack my head against the bottom of the desk trying to find some little thing so that's what the tray is for it just keeps a hold of everything and I'm gonna be doing what you would do to make like a bracelet or something I have some crimp beads and the way that you do this if you haven't ever made jewelry before is a crimp bead is like a little a little teeny tiny holder and you put that on and then you put the end through your bead or in this case a button and then you thread it back through the crimp bead and that that makes a loop and then I have this little pair of pliers that has a circular space in between and I pinch that down on the crimp bead and then I fold it and pinch it again and then that holds the wire on it it pinches it together crimps it together and holds it on so this is going to be this is actually an arm so that little button is going to be the hand and then I'm going to be doing some beads to make the rest of the arm and I'm sorry that some of this is off camera I when I'm doing something like that cutting or crimping or things like that I I tend to bring it close to myself so that I can see what I'm doing and then it brings it off camera <laughs> which I need to pay better attention but I'm still new to this I'm, I'm still very much learning how to make videos so I'm sorry about that now I've got a lot of different beads out you know I'm one of those people I start something and I'm really excited about it oh I'm gonna make jewelry I'm gonna make lots of jewelry I mean, this is gonna be so fun and so I buy a bunch of stuff and then something else catches my eye and I move on to the next thing and so I've definitely made jewelry but not the extent of the amount of beads and things that I have I have a ton so we're gonna be using some today and maybe this Christmas I'll even make some bracelets or something for someone <laughs> I, I might do it you never know so you can see the button there and the crimp bead and then the beads are going to start going on and that little tail that's sticking out is going to be going under the beads that I'm sticking on so that it doesn't show it just gets threaded back through the beads as far as it will go and then I keep going and I ha see I'm, I'm opening these beads I mean I'm, I'm like literally cutting them open <laughs> because they're still on their strings because I haven't used them uh, I have some plastic pearls that I'm using I've got some plastic eight millimeter round beads that are from Walmart there the the bluish one that I put on then I have these glass they're check glass cut beads with um, an AB finish which is Aurora Borealis finish and I have those in a few different colors I've got that crystally one I've got this one that's more of an opaque blue and then I have the more translucent blue and I'm just I'm really I'm not thinking I'm just putting them on just making something pretty and it's it's a simple process it, it's time time consuming but simple there's the crystal ones that crystal color they're not actual crystal 
there. Less. Less expensive than the fancy crystals. But more expensive than that kind of plasticky one I just put on. So, you know, it's just a variety. And I keep laying it up against the body piece to make sure that it's long enough. And now I'm looking for crimp bead again. So we're going to do the same process. We're going to put the crimp bead on. Put the wire. And this is jewelry beading wire, by the way. It's, it's a flexible type of wire with the plastic coating on the outside. So the crimp bead goes on. Then the wire goes through the hole, which I now have to punch on the other side because I only punched them on the one side. So that's what I'm doing now with my pokey tool. That's a technical term, pokey tool. Okay, 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 okay. Now the wire goes through, and then that wire goes back through the crimp bead and through a couple more beads to hide the tail. And then I'm going to cinch it all up real tight, pulling everything, getting the tension, and then I'll take that, that crimp plier again, go in and crimp that bead one way and then another way. And that way the wire is held tight and the arm is attached. And then that little extra tail, I'll just trim it off in it and use it again. So I do this four times. I make the two arms match and the two legs match. But I, I cut that because do you really need to see me do it four times? I don't think so. So there you go. That's her body. Arms and legs. The hand buttons have a shank but the foot buttons don't so I just looped it through one of the holes because it is a button so it has holes so that you could sew it onto something if you wanted to and then I have a star stamp here and I've got some PBO gold paint that's a shimmery paint and I'm just stamping stars on the body because like I said I think angels are made out of stars and moonbeams so I wanted to have some glittery gold plus the, f the hands and feet are gold and so I wanted to bring the gold color into the body as well and I like stars so just putting those all over and you, you can see I'm impatient I don't even wait for it to dry on one side I just flip it over I get paint on my mat wipe it off flip it back over <laughs> I have zero patience okay now for her face I'm gonna paint it on and the products that I'm going to be using are my Neocolor 2 different flesh tone water soluble crayons, Posca pin, and then I'm going to do a little bit of shading with some pet pins. I have this beautiful set of, like, I think there's like 72 different pet pins, artist pet brush pins. Um, I love them, I recommend them, but I know they're very expensive. My friend actually bought them for me in exchange or payment for some paintings that I did for her that she asked me to, to do. She always supports my art. She's like my number one fan. <laughs> she, I would not have the expensive thi art things that I have if it wasn't for her because she, if it's ever my birthday or Christmas, she's like, what do you want? I want art supplies. I tell her what I want and she, she finds a way to get it for me. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. So I love those pit pins, but I, I understand that they're very expensive and not everyone has those. So you could just use some paint or you could use a regular, a regular pin like a, a Tombow or something or even Crayola. Just make sure that you seal it because the pit pins are made out of India ink. And so they're permanent once they're dry. But the other types of markers out there. Well, the Copics would work, but they're again expensive too. So I don't know. Anyway, another option to make the face, of course, would be to just do collage by cutting out a face from a magazine. There's so many beautiful people out there with beautiful faces and you could just cut out a face and, and collage it on just like I did the body. Sand the edges. It would be, it would be absolutely gorgeous. I just happen to like making faces. So this is, of course, a whimsy face. Nobody has that big of eyes with that small a nose and mouth, and nobody's face is completely round either. So this is this is something that I enjoy a lot. So putting on the highlights and then putting on the shadows and then putting on the highlights and then putting on the shadows, back and forth, back and forth. I'm using different colors, sometimes drawing them directly onto the wood, 
and sometimes using my brush to collect the color off the end of the crayon. By layering a lot of different colors, on to one on top of each other, you create depth. And it, it becomes more interesting to the eye and I guess more realistic, although this obviously isn't realistic. But that's the reason that you're doing the layering when you're doing faces. Skin is very translucent and it has a lot of colors in it. If you really look at somebody's skin, it's got yellows and browns and pinks and reds and, and a little bit of blue where veins are. Try to duplicate that. So because this project has a lot of gold in it, I went ahead and got out an ochre pit pen, which is very yellow. I don't usually use that on a Caucasian face, not very often. If I'm doing a more ethnic, um, darker toned pigment, I will sometimes use yellows, but I tend to, to shy away from yellows because I think it makes the skin look <coughs> sallow. So I did use it on this one because this project has a ton of gold. It's got gold hands, gold feet, you know. So it turned out really well and I enjoyed it. I'll probably start using more ochre more often. Why not? And then I have a brown and uh, going back in with some pink with my water-soluble crayons. I, I love those. Neocolor 2s, even though they might seem expensive, well worth it. Uh, those are my favorite thing. If If I had to go to a deserted island with only one art supply, it would be the Neo Colors. <laughs> I hope that never happens, <laughs> but absolutely love them. And then of course my Posca pit pins, I mean my Posca pins and my pit pins, love those too. But the Posca that I'm using is the white to put whites in her eyes plus pump up the highlights. I don't even use the black one, I just use the white today. And Yep, there's some uh, more blue for her eyes, trying to give it kind of a two-tone look. And then I come in with a indigo. That's not black. It's actually the, the very, very dark blue. I'm liking that one a lot. More highlights. And I think she's done. Pretty close, getting pretty close to done. This, this process probably took the longest of the whole project. No, the, uh, looking for the drill, that took the longest. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't subject you all to watching that. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to assemble everything. And I'm going to be using, oh wait, no, I got out my metallic rub-ons. This metal piece I got from Cards More by Sherry, her Etsy shop, I think. And it's very antiqued. And so I got out the rub-ons to try to add some some brighter gold shimmer to it before I glued it on. And then I have my 3D gloss gel. This is a very thick gel. It's really great for doing assembly projects. It can glue metals and plastics and everything together. So that's why I use that to put the metal piece on which is her halo, by the way, in case you didn't figure that out. That hole in the middle of her forehead just got covered by a gem. <laughs> I told you I'd fix it. <laughs> it's the hole in her head. This is an extra piece of lace that I cut off when I was doing those, um, the skirt parts that are still drying over there in the corner. And she doesn't have a neck, so I'm trying to give an something with a kind of a V shape to give an illusion of a collar or something even though she doesn't have a neck. And then I'm gonna use some more 3D gloss gel to attach the head to the body. Of course I'm too impatient and I keep messing with it and flipping it over and flopping it around and it keeps falling off <laughs> because I don't let it dry. But at some point I do let it dry and that's the end of this video because when I came back to, to finish up my little detailing work, I didn't turn the camera on. I thought I did, but I didn't. So 
there are some bits that didn't get filmed, which is mostly me um, putting glitter glue on. I used Stickles Gold and Stickles Diamond, which is an iridescent, and put a lot of that on a lot of places. So you'll see it in the in the close-ups, but you won't see me actually doing it. Now that's the skirt, and I want the the lace to show at the bottom, so you'll see me kind of peeling it apart and tearing part of the paper off on the bottom there. The print on the other side is really pretty too, but we won't be seeing that. And then I pleat it. I just like fold it, fold it over, try to make some little extra volume by pleating and making it more of a curved shape at the top so that it looks like a skirt. And I also have a little rhinestone belt that I put on there. And then I do glue a heart, which is a Jolie's sticker that has a star on it that I found in my stash. I don't know where it came from, but it brings in the pink from her face down to the, to the main part of the project. So it looks really nice, but you won't see me glue it on because that happened while the camera was off. Oh, her head's falling off again. Darn it. If I'd stop messing with it, it would stop doing that. <laughs> So I put the skirt on the front and the back. I, um, I, you saw me glue on the wings. There's her little rhinestone belt. And then I think this is when I finally decide I better just let the darn thing dry. Put a little bit more glue on there because I keep messing with it. And then I go away at this point and let it dry. And then when I come back, I put a lot of glitter glue on. So there's the finished project. And you can see the heart. You can see that I added glitter glue up by the halo, um, on the wings, on the skirt. It's, it's everywhere. It's basically everywhere. But I wanted it to be very, very sparkly. And then there's the heart that I glued in the center um, that has the star in it. So that's it. Bye-bye.